Hello, Facebook family and friends. This is Lena Lassiter, and I am the founder and president of Forever Healed. We are a nonprofit organization, and we help our clients who are grieving from a loss of any kind. We provide them with the tools to help them ease their pain, to reclaim their lives, and to recover. So thank you for being with me tonight. Um, I'm just excited about our topic tonight. I've had a lot of recommendations from you guys as to things that we need to cover. And one thing that I have heard consistently is people who feel as though they have lost themselves. So I want to talk about that tonight. I want to talk about those of you who feel like you're, you're losing yourself. So again, I'm Lena Lassiter. For those of you who don't know me, president and founder of Forever Heal. We are a nonprofit organization and we help our clients to heal from pain associated with the loss of any kind, um, to reclaim their lives and to recover. I'm also a licensed minister at Divine World Changers International Ministries. I'm a grief recovery specialist and also a senior manager in corporate America. I'm educated in crisis and trauma. So um, just want to come and talk to you guys real quick tonight, briefly about losing self. I thought it was an interesting topic. Um, some people have come to me and said, gosh, you know, Lena, I feel like I'm just losing myself through all of this. And what do I do when I feel like I'm losing myself through homeschooling my children? I feel like I'm losing myself through being a, a spouse. I feel like I'm losing myself, you know, through work. What do I do? How do I gain sense of self or how do I not lose myself? So in our grief recovery classes, one thing that we talk about a lot are STIRBs. And STIRBs are short-term emotional relieving behaviors. So these are things that we do as coping mechanisms when going through a crisis or a stressful situation. So sometimes the noise of everyday life can cause us to become busy. And it prevents us from just sitting with ourselves. So sometimes the stirs can be just excessive drinking. Sometimes it can be excessive eating, excessive exercising. Um, and again, just staying busy, right? So just volunteering a lot or just doing things, just not to be able to feel our pain or to just stay busy and have the noise um, keep us from just sitting with ourselves. So for those of you who are just joining me, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're talking about the fear of losing ourselves tonight. Comment, let me know that you're here. Um, if you have any questions about this, any comments about losing self, some things that may have worked for you, give me a shout out. Let me know um, who you are and where you're watching from. Um, if you are feeling as though you're losing yourself during this COVID-19 pandemic while working remotely. Maybe you're not working at all. Maybe um, some of us are homeschooling. Um, some of us are taking care of sick parents. Um, some of us are just feeling a sense of loss because we're not at our churches and we're not serving the way that we used to. Um, some of us aren't um, in our communities and serving and volunteering in our community. So you just feel a sense of loss. So even myself, right? So not being at church, not serving, not being able to hold grief recovery classes, not to be able to go in corporate America and facilitate um, the hidden cost of grief in the workplace. So I said, okay, so who who am I? You know, out outside of that. So some people are just feeling a sense of just a sense of loss. So when I was considering this topic, I kept thinking, where did I want to go with this? Um, you know. How do I want to even present this tonight? Because this can be a month to two month conversation about losing yourself. But I wanted to just ask you guys to just consider something different tonight um, and just bear with me as we go through this losing ourselves. So just consider this. What if you are losing yourself to find yourself? 
What if you are losing yourself to find yourself? Um, hi, Doris. How are you? Nice to see you. What if you are losing yourself to find yourself? So what do I mean by that? Who are you outside of the fancy makeup? Who are you outside of your title at work? Who are you outside of serving? Who are you outside of being a parent? Who are you outside of being a spouse? Who are you? Um, what causes you the most anxiety or, or stress when there is no noise in your life? Perhaps you are realizing that the motives behind your serving weren't pure. And some of us are sitting with that. Um, maybe you're seeing areas in which you have placed a pause on that you need to refocus. So some of us have books on the inside of us. Some of us have poetry to write. Um, some of us are mentors. We need to get out here and, you know, and mentor some people. What, what is that? What is that gift or that creativity that you have just put on pause because of all the noise, you know, in your life? It's hard for us to know ourselves and to find our voices in the midst of so many other dominant ideas and opinions. Um, and this is what I liken it to. Sometimes parents feel like empty nesters when their children go off to college, right? And they say, well, gosh, who are we now? You know, um, they look at their spouse and say, what is our purpose? You know, they have to adjust to their children becoming adults and they have to also adjust to not providing their children with direction and guidance all the time and allowing them to make choices and to to live their lives. So if that's you and you have you know gone through the empty nester you know phase, um, give me a shout out. So how do we build a sense of self? How do we build a sense of self? So I'm going to give you just some quick tips tonight on how to uh, build a sense of self. Um, some of these things you, you, you may have heard before, so we're going to revisit them, and some of them perhaps not. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is lean into the discomfort of spending time with yourself. Lean into the discomfort of spending time with yourself. My co-pastor, Francoise Hickman, she met with the women at our church last week and she said something that just confirmed this conversation that I was going to have with you guys tonight. She talked about it's important to have me time. And I like how she phrased that, you know, and she said it doesn't have to be an hour, you know, not even 30 minutes. It could just be 10 minutes of, of me time. So it is true that, you know, learn to be alone. If you're not used to it, you can feel a bit miserable. Um, emotions you have hidden from yourself might surface. And you might, for the first time in a long time, actually feel a little lonely, but wait it out. Lean into the discomfort, wait it out. So once you adjust to spending time alone, you'll also start to hear yourself clearly. Um, it can be quite exciting to, you know, to suddenly have a clearer voice in your head, right? Telling you what to do and what you like and what you don't like. Um, and I always say journal, take a walk read. Um, sometimes the television and social media distract us from doing the things we once enjoy. So learn to say no, because when we say yes to everything, ultimately we're saying no to something. And is that something you? So I want you to lean into the discomfort. The second thing that we need to talk about here is developing hobbies and interests. So hobbies and interests, they're healthy. They're life enriching activities. Not only do they reduce stress, they boost your confidence and um, they combat your boredom. But hobbies also allow each person to discover more about who they are and what they like. And knowledge of self is critical, guys, to the perception of oneself. After all, how can you know who you are if you don't even know what you enjoy doing in your spare time? So once you pinpoint your hobby, I want you to practice it regularly. Take a related class. Some of you have been saying for a long time, but you want to go back to school or, or take a class. You know, what's stopping you? What's stopping you from doing that? Network with people who also enjoy your favorite activities. So make sure that you're taking time to network. 
The next thing that we want to talk about, the third point, what I want you to do, take an internal inventory. Take an internal inventory. So what do I mean by that? Take some time to just sit down with your journal. Grab some paper, grab a pen, find out who you are. What do you believe in? What are your values? What do you want out of life? What are your strengths? And more importantly, what are your weaknesses? So learning more about every aspect of yourself will take time, but I want you to know that it is possible. And now what I want you to do is turn your purpose into action. So challenge yourself. Take small steps each day to bring you closer to your goals. So everything worth fighting for, guys, it takes a lot of effort and you are worth it. So take your purpose, put it into action. I hear a lot of people say, you know, I want to do this and I'm motivated to do this and I'm passionate about this. That's great, but that's half the battle. You have to be committed to completing it. Anybody can begin something, but what about completing it? So what I want you to do is turn your purpose into action. Another thing I want us to consider are daily positive affirmations or daily devotionals. Daily positive affirmation or daily devotionals. They help to boost our confidence. They make us feel as though we can accomplish anything we want to. There are plenty of suggestions around the web, but you can also make some of your own as needed. So if it's that favorite Bible verse sitting down, you know, with your favorite Bible verse or book, that affirmation book, maybe just some affirmations of yourself. Who are you? Who did God say you are outside of all the titles? I heard Tasha King say this the other day and it was so profound. I think her mother has said it to her. Speaking of who are we outside of the titles, she mentioned how in the Bible, God said he'll make our name great, not our titles great. So you have to figure out who you are. And I'm going to close with this quote. And this quote, I don't know who the author is, but I love this quote. And it says, one of the greatest tra tragedies in life is to lose your own self of self and accept the version of you that is expected by everyone else. One of the greatest tragedies in life is to lose your own sense of self and accept the version of you that is expected by everyone else. So lose yourself in order to find yourself. And I want all of you to be well. Thank you for joining. If you have any topics for upcoming live sessions, it's um, you know Mental Health Month, and we are going to be partnering with psychologists, some pastors, um, people in the health mental health field to just kind of talk through some different topics on mental health. Um, but if there are burning topics that you want us to talk about, because again, we can't hold our grief recovery classes right now, I'm more than happy to jump on and provide some tips to you guys to help you. We will get through this. We are going to get through this. And this too shall pass. Be healed, everybody. Thanks for joining.